Hi, this is Jeff Lupiton, the voice of Gillian Seed from Snatcher, and you're listening to Retsu Talk. Me and Metal Gear just love it. Sounds good to me. Keep listening. All right. Welcome to Rutsu Talk episode, I think this is nine. This and is nine. big thanks to Sega Sky for that in- intro and for reaching out to Jeff Lupiton himself and getting him to record that somehow. I have listened to that like ten times. I'm, I'm really beyond amazed by it. It caught me off guard the first time because I listened to it and I was like, you know, that's a pretty good Gillian Snatcher impression, uh, Gillian Seed impression. <laughs> And then, uh, well, when you sent me the the link to it, you know, the URL kind of gave it away because it said, uh, Retsu Talk Intro with Jeff Lupiton. I don't know how it would have given it away from that, but I, mm-hmm. but when I read it, I'm like, well, there, there is no way that's really that, but. That's yeah, the joke title, clearly. I, I was like, my, I was, my mouth was just open while I was like watching that. I was like 14 again, like, oh my God, I love everything. Life's happy now. <laughs> my cynical <laughs> shell has been shed, you know. And our hearts grew three sizes that day. Mine did. I mean, you never liked Snatcher until recently. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Good game. <laughs> um. That was no. That was really nice of Lupin to do that. Um, really, really cool guy. Yeah. yeah. For, for Metal Gear could have used a little more constructive criticism, but okay. Oh, uh, whatever. I mean, Lucy Childs. What are we gonna do with her? Uh. Crazy. I could name that whole fucking staff. I really could. <laughs> No, so how how would you weigh Snatcher against Police Knots? Oh my God, that's a tough. Qu- I like Snatcher better personally. Um, oh really? I do, uh, and I've I've heard the opposite reaction. Mark the translator likes Police Knots better. Cherry Doom, who if you remember was did our video let's play of Snatcher with us. Yes. Uh, but she played Police Knots herself, and she actually liked Police Knots better. Um, I feel like there is a lot less interaction in Police Knots. Like, there's stuff the character kind of does on his own without the player's input. And, you know what I mean? It's a little more like, uh, I feel like I'm watching the game more than a little more than I'm playing it. I still haven't seen any of Police Knots. I'm holding out for our eventual long play of it, if there still is one in the pipeline. No, I, w- I really would love to do that, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, let's do that, actually. Maybe we should make that our next thing. Okay. I'd like that. You heard it here first, folks. We also have our surprise thing that we discussed today, but we'll leave that. Yes. Yeah, because it might not happen either, so, you know, who knows. I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, the, the, the PewDiePie, Toby Games things. Ah, yes, that. I really, so I watched Toby Games the other day, which mm-hmm. I'd never heard of him before. It was, his name, I think he goes by, is like Tabascus. Yeah, you seemed kind of kind of down after that. I really was. I was I was really sad. Like I I genuinely like it's I think part of the reason I have trouble with like a standard Rex Prey of them is it's really depressing. It really is. Yeah, the the problem is how do you add to it instead of just bring the audience down with you? That's the problem. It's really hard to watch. Like Yeah. I mean and it's it shocks me how much worse Toby, how or no, no, not how much worse, but like how Toby Games actually is worse than PewDiePie, even though they're both awful. Yeah. So for those not in the know, who is this guy exactly? Well, they're both the same. They're really kind of fungible. Um, I think Toby Games just kind of outsteps PewDiePie. But PewDiePie is, if you didn't know, Swedish Let's Player, points a camera at himself, plays games, and he has basically three jokes he just does over and over again. Mm-hmm. And Toby Games basically does the exact same thing, except. He doesn't have a Swedish accent, so he resorts to funny voices. Hmm. It's the chicken and egg quandary. Which came first? I think Toby did because he technically has more subscribers. And I have to give him one point of credit is that he's not bad with voices, you know? He does, like, all right voice work. But it's just that they both do the same gimmick, which is don't stop talking. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not funny. I can't input anything on the video game that's going on right now. So That's just, actually in the rules for YouTube Let's Plays, I think. I think it is. It that's must rule be. one. It must be in the terms of Let's Play service. The, it has to be. Your video tults. gets removed otherwise. Absolutely. 
Hey, enjoy your subscribers, fuckers. Did you get Jeff Lupin in to introduce your Let's Plays? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> was that your Metal Gear? It took me a second. <laughs> that's, that's, that was the best I could do. <laughs> no, I mean, it was spot on. I've, I haven't seen Snatcher in a while, oh so God. I had to go with what I remembered. I have the feeling, however Lucy Childs did that, they overprocessed the hell out of it, so you're kind of fucked. But, um... oh. <laughs> Fix that in post. <laughs> Oh my god, the callbacks, they're everywhere! <laughs> it's like it just happened an episode ago, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we have fun. What were we talking about? My disdain or my happiness? Not I, your disdain and also... Well, it's something we get a lot of requests for. I mean... I think, well, I think the thing is the, the subscriber base or the fans or whatever, they want to cause, like, an uproar. Yeah. I feel like we can't... Which, sorry. Mm. No, I mean, let's, is that if that's the motivation, though, it's kind of, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess the way I feel is we can't not ad address it. I mean, it's, it's the new trend in Let's Play, and it, it really needs yeah. to be smacked. But since it is a trend, not like a singular video, it's something that seems to lend itself better to parody than it does just straight talking over it. Let's not, you know, let's, let's, we've had some ideas, you know. We have. We uh, did some brainstorming back and forth. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see what we'll see what happens ultimately. Yeah, and then uh, somebody will beat us to it, and we won't want to do it anymore. Um, Actually, there was that video. Some I don't know who it was, but some guy did some sort of parody where he just showed, it was just a video of him just playing something. <laughs> that was good. We didn't see what he was playing, and he just did these over the top reactions with this cheesy production value. He was like, "Hilarious, funny, subscribe, yeah. hard to produce." Yeah. You know, yeah. And it was that British Pop culture guy, right? phenomenon. Yeah. And he's like, I'm opening the menu. Oh my god, it's scary. And then they, yeah. like, he played it. But like it's, a it's seriously effect. really funny. It is actually. He did a very good job with it. I wish I could remember his name. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'd plug him, but fuck him. Uh, mm. This is Retsu Talk, mm -hmm. bitch. Um. <laughs> Sponsored by the Hideo Kojima celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> First Paul Hiding, and now this. So that's part of what we've been doing lately. What, kissing up to Hideo Kojima celebrities? Or yes, that. Okay. Yeah. Mostly that. Actually. Yeah, and brainstorming how the hell to deal with yeah. PewDiePie. So I guess, Guy, if you could get Hideo Kojima to do an introduction for us. <laughs> or actually, we were talking about getting, uh, trying to contact Paul Lighting. Uh, uh, let's do that. I mean, we know his YouTube username, we so we could send him a PM. We do, absolutely. But the, the question is, what do we ask him to say? Oh, well, um... Do we ask him to go for something Evil Zone-esque, or something more familiar like Metal Gear? I have the feeling he'd be sued if he were to do a Metal Gear thing. Hmm. Honestly. Well, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like he, he'd just be like, What? You, I commented on your YouTube channel. That's Isn't that enough? That's my Paul adding, by the <laughs> that's, way. That's good, actually. <laughs> I thought you. that was him. Oh, okay. Cool. We gotta contact the Jet Slate voice actor as well, because I know he's not doing much. Which one? <laughs> the first one. The real one. The real I, don't, one. I don't accept... Not the roided out one? I don't accept retribution in the Dead to Rights canon. Yeah, Sorry. I mean, that one's not very hard to introduce. <laughs> I mean, uh, to impersonate. You just <laughs> be angry and be like, oh yeah, Jack Slate. Yeah, exactly, basically. It's Retsu Talk, what's the matter Fuck with you? Fuck you, it's Retsu Talk! <laughs> Sounds of punching somebody? Absolutely. Mm. Shadow, <laughs> intro. Delightful. Roof! Mm. That's another thing you could do, Paul Lighting. Uh, Paul, can you introduce Retsu, Retsu Talk as Jack Slate's dad? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's yeah, right. yeah. He's he, any video game. He's probably voiced something in it. <laughs> do you think, something. Well, let me ask you this: Do you think the people who like Retsu Prey and maybe even listen to this podcast know that know about our Let's Plays together, yours and mine? Maybe how? no. I'm sure there's goon crossover. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know how out far outside that circle the audience goes. Personally, you know. Look, how many times do I have to say lparchive.org on this podcast? <laughs> Look, Balder gave me like a hundred bucks. Okay, that's yeah. all he had. <laughs> Weren't you telling me like Balder doesn't want to archive his own stuff? Oh my god, this is the stupidest on his website thing. that he devotes and yeah. probably un insane amount of time to upkeep and yeah. up, or put content on yeah because somebody was like somebody asked in one of the um the like request threads or recommendation threads like is there a good max Payne one and i'm like yeah you know Baldur did a couple the his um, were great actually 
And he did another one, um, Star Trek, which... Oh, yeah, the Borg one? Yeah, that was fucking hilarious. Yeah. I'm not even, like, a giant Star Trek fan. I like The Next Generation, but, like, mm-hmm. you know, that was huge. I didn't... I'll tell you what, like, I liked Next Generation. I did not recognize Q on Breaking Bad. That's, that's... Oh, you know, yeah, John Delancey. Yeah. Is that, yeah, I, I couldn't even tell you. I like Q. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just not, you know, whatever. But the point is, he did this um, FMV Star Trek The Next Generation game where, like, Q is talking to you, the player, and it's, like, it's fucking awesome, yeah. But, um... Uh, but, yeah, he didn't archive any of them on LPArchive.org, but he archives everyone else's. Mm-hmm. And I, I am him, like, where the hell is the Max Payne Let's Plays? And he's like, yeah, I don't I don't really like to do that, or however the fuck his voice He was is. worried about, like, a conflict of interest perception? Yeah, but it's like... like but, dude... <laughs> you host the fucking website. It's not like they don't qualify as being hostable on there. Plus, like, it's not even just he hosts links to the Let's Plays. He hosts the fucking videos. Yeah, and, like, thousands upon thousands of images. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, and that, and he has LP, uh, LPEX.org, which is, like, a fucking image host he made for Let's Play specifically. He made that so... He made that, I think, specifically so the Sandcastle would be easier to read. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he made, like, a Sandcastle test poster. Like, the dude has done so fucking much for Let's Play, it's like... Yes, it's fine. Host your own fucking videos on your own fucking servers. It's yeah, cool. you know, if you do that, we'll call it even. I hear though he gets shit because yeah, right. I hear though he gets shit though because like he won't archive like YouTube LPs and shit, which is well, those are the ones like that are posted as YouTube dumps, right? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, there's people who like aren't associated with something awful at all. Like, will contact him and be like, "Hey, can you, you know." Uh, archive me playing Mario Party with my friends. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's like, no, dickhead, that's not the point. <laughs> yeah, well, isn't, like, the mission statement or the intro to the archives specifically say all of these Let's Plays come from the Something Awful forums? You know, though, they don't read that. Well, okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's I mean... But, Baldrick, host your LPs. It's, ridic- it's ridiculous. It's beyond ridiculous. It's, yeah. it's, I, I mean, gonna, you tolerated us in that Ridley video in Metroid Prime 3. This is the least... I think I'm going to ban him if he doesn't put it up. Mm-hmm. That's my, that's my, that's my it's promise. It's time to lay down the gauntlet, Balder. I think so. I think it's time to like lay down the law here. You have to I know every, the moment we upload this podcast, it will instantly be downloaded into Baldrick's mind, because he's that tuned in to Let's Play. And, and yeah, I, think, I think even now, somehow... Yeah. <laughs> just recording it, the MP3 right here locally. I just kind of feel like he's with me somehow every time I'm doing something Let's Play related. <laughs> he's like my Obi-Wan Kenobi watching over my shoulder. <laughs> and, and giving you, like, advice that conflicts with, like, the sequels and whatever. Diabetes, you will host your LPs on LPix.org. I know I said Darth Vader was dead, but I wasn't really paying attention at the time. By the way, I killed him, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> but, but, Baldrick, why didn't you upload your Let's Plays? Why didn't you tell me? I was drunk, by Beatus. I don't even remember. Oh. Is that, my, is that a good Alec Guinness? I'm just curious. I, I think so, yeah. He would be proud of that. Let's get, the ghost of Alec Guinness is here alongside Baldrick, actually. Let's get the wonderful Jeff Lupin in to do Alec Guinness next time. Mm-hmm. He's flexible. He'll do that. I'm going to just be thinking about that all week, by the way. I'm just going to warn you now. You're going to be bragging about that to your coworkers? <laughs> yes. Like, well, you cracked that computer code, but did you get this? <laughs> I, I went through my entire I am buddy list. Like, who would care about this? <laughs> and, um... <laughs> like John Cusack, you go outside your fiancé's window and hold up a boombox playing his voice? I had, to, I had to explain to my fiancé, like, who he was and everything. I was like, Do you remember my favorite video game? She's like, No. Like, How did she take uh, take that news? I said that was really cool. Like I do, I do explain it, but you know, she didn't just leave the room. No, she didn't just. Leave okay, the room. I felt like that. <laughs> the worst speaking, no. speaking of fiancés, you were telling me you showed her parents. Uh, oh your God! In-laws, future in laws, Billy and C video. No, let me let me back up a little there. Um, she showed her parents the latest Billy and C video. Oh, yeah, she's a huge Billy MC fan, right? She, she, yeah, she does not, like, play video games. She doesn't really care about Let's Play. She she knows about my videos, obviously, and, you know, she's watched a few or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, uh, she, like, loves Billy MC, thinks it's the funniest fucking shit. 
and um, I, she she actually pointed out the video, uh, the Bro Op LP, Retsu Prey we did, where oh, they're yeah. playing Mario Brothers, him and Lime Popsicle. Mm. She like I me. She's like, honey, you gotta watch this right now. And that's when I'm like, and then I am do like, you gotta watch this right now, you know. Yeah, she's but, like your Retsu Prey agent. Yeah, basically. But mm. um, Billy uh, came out with it. Billy and Lime came out with a new video where they play Parodius. Yeah, and uh, Lime does a pretty amazing slow beef impression. <laughs> I feel weird doing it because we just did one, you know? But it's like, it's somehow a little better than the previous. So yeah, I like, know. I feel like it's more of a video that we should just, like, like, quote-unquote like, instead mm-hmm. of make fun of. Cause... Well, my favorite, my absolute favorite part is when they... Well, so Parodius, uh, if you know, is the parody of Gradius game, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's one point where there's, like, a, a Las Vegas showgirl that kind of comes on screen. You have to, like, sort of do- go between her legs and dodge her, you know? <laughs> yes. And, but, like, when she comes on screen, it's like, it, Billy goes, like, ooh, baby. Like, he's really into it. <laughs> and then they both start talking about how they love the can-can. Which is, yeah. like, like what, the fuck, what the fuck decade are you from? <laughs> um, and then And then, like... Um, and then, of course, Lion goes into how he'd like to see Kat Dennings do the can-can. Yeah, I had to have to do the callback, yeah. He really goes into Kat Dennings. Yeah, and, and then they they both impersonate us, which... Oh, did Billy does also? I think so. I forget if it's Lime doing both our voices, but, and, but or Billy helps him out. Either way, it's... it's <laughs> Billy with the assist. It's so bad. Yeah. Like, the first time they do it, it's so bad that even, it, like, Lime does the impression and Billy says, I don't know, that doesn't really sound like them. Like, even he, as supportive as he is, is like... Mm-hmm. He had to Retsu Prey's impression a little bit. I couldn't tell, like, if he, if Lime at the beginning was doing me or you, but he sounded like a Disney villain. You know, like <laughs> well, the, the you, obviously, then. Oh, okay, oh, sure. Like, the stupid mm-hmm. Disney villain where it's like, I'm gonna make fun of your videos, but you know what I mean? Like, That's Loby. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. like, okay, Lime, if that's what you think of me, but yeah. you're never getting Gap Jennings. Um, uh, mm. <laughs> well, you never know. So there's that. Do, well, no, yeah, no, no. Um, and actually, uh, uh, I got a PM recently from a goon who was actually uh, speaking on behalf of the Lime Pop School and wants to do a video with us. Oh, this was a goon? Yes. Yeah, he was like, hey, Lime Popsicle um, wanted to know if you would do a video with us. Here's his real YouTube name. Could you message him on YouTube? Lime is rapidly expanding his Let's Play network. Lime's a bit of a whore. Um, I, I kind of got that impression watching the most recent video. No, he, uh... He's yeah. tried a little bit too hard to hijack Billy, I think. Well, I'm, And for that, I get a little skeptical of him. I like, I like Lime. I'm, I'm pro-Lime. Um, I'm on Team Billy still. All right, all right, that's fair. Um, I know I it's I know it's rapidly dividing our fan base, but I don't I mean, you got to choose a side. <laughs> no, yes, yeah, it's, it's we're pretty much the next Twilight here. Um, well, I'm uh, I don't know. I, I would I would maybe do a video with him. I don't know. I don't know that he would be a good fit for Retsu Prey, like, to do a video with us. Nothing. That's what that. I was thinking. It seems like something that might be a funny idea in theory, but an execution is. More of an exercise in tedium. I I have the I, I'm I'm iffy on Billy. If we could get Billy on the podcast, I'm not quite mm-hmm. sure how that would go. Maybe not for an entire podcast, but have just a segment with him on. I'd be happy to though. Like at least try it. Why am I like a radio know. show where you cut to an interview for like a couple minutes, maybe something like that? Just a <laughs> quick featurette. We're taking some callers. This is Billy from Texas. Hey guys, how are you? I'm- you hear, you hear Mario music in the background? Love to see you do the can-can. Really? The can-can, Billy? <laughs> like, hang up, dial tone. <laughs> Actually, I forgot. The other great part of that video, too, is apparently the recording software fucked up while they were playing Parodius. And they have, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Billy does editing, which is really just, like, these awkward jump cuts. <laughs> where you're like, wait, when you're talking about this now? It's constant whiplash while you're watching. <laughs> it's awesome. Bill, Billy's the only person who can get away with it, though. <laughs> Billy pulls it off every time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's the uh, Billy portion of the podcast. No, there you go. There's I mean, that. a recurring feature on Retsu Talk, I believe. <laughs> I'm sure Jeff Lupinen loves being followed by this kid from the internet. Yeah. yeah. There's that. The other hot Retsu topic is controversy. 
in recent videos. Oh, I forgot about that, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, about a few days ago, week to a few days ago, we posted two Hot Topic videos, both related to females. <laughs> in a matter of speaking. One of the blocky variety and one of the breasty variety. <laughs> of the nude breasty variety. So nude this is... breasty proportionally challenged variety. So this, of course, is um, the uh, Minecraft mod uh, Rips of Prey. What did we title that? Oh, Sexy Block Party. Sexy Block Party, yeah. Right. I think, <laughs> did you come up with that one? I, that was pretty good. I th- yeah, I think I came up with the block party one, and you came up with the Skyrim one. Yeah, the yeah solution, kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. elegant, least stated. Of course, yes. Subtle is the way I go. <laughs> yes. um, right. But it was two videos that I don't think either of us expected to draw so much controversy. I'm stunned. Well, with, the, uh, with the Minecraft video, uh, Total Biscuit, who is like this really popular um, casting, uh, what do you call it? He does live casting on StarCraft matches and shit like that. All right. And he's got, I think, something along the lines of close to a million subscribers, and he likes the um, Block Party video, and so his fans saw that, and some of his fans are kind of retarded. Yeah, I would say And so. so they came into it calling us, like, feminist apologists, which is kind of the last <laughs> thing I expected us to be called is on for making fun of are? a guy who made a girlfriend mod for Minecraft. Why would you apologize for being a feminist? Exactly. I don't know. Or wait, or even being someone apologizing for the... F- I don't get it. Anyway. It's something that happened in both uh, girlfriendy, breasty, moddy videos. <laughs> but I think bringing feminism into it is kind of odd, because I think it's more <laughs> just having a sense of decency. Let me throw... Yeah, exactly. I'm, I mean, come I'm, on. Are you really trying to argue in favor of this, defending it? I am not known as a champion of social issues or anything, but yeah. th- it does not take, you know, a whole lot of, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for here, where you're, like, kind of a normal person and, like, you want people treated normally and decently, you know? A uh, human being, functional human being. Okay. It doesn't take very much of that to look at, like, I don't know, bikini Minecraft girls yeah. and say, hey, maybe that's silly. I mean, you hey, know, we're just celebrating the female body. No, no, you're not. I just you're celebrating your very uh, juvenile, warped concept of what a woman is supposed to look like. Well, here's the crazy thing too. I feel like with the Skyrim mod thing, right, where it's at least not like a, I, I'm not even gonna continue that sentence, but like you know what I mean, where it's like not like the blocky thing, because I almost thought the Minecraft thing was sort of like a joke. Except with the way people defended it, apparently they don't think so. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I just don't understand their defense. Well, I would, I would have thought personally, because like, if you're so into these Skyrim mods, you'd think of it as like a guilty pleasure type of deal. You know what I mean? Like your mom catching your like reading a Playboy kind of thing, except much worse. But yeah. um, but but like these people fucking defend it. Like they're proud of it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm stunned by that. That's the thing, yeah, they're acting like they're beyond reproach yeah, or for like, getting behind this. And it's like, really? That's like what's so baffling to me. Like, Do you need to have a cogent argument for why this is dumb? I mean, yeah, well, that's the thing about the Minecraft shit, too, because it's like, that's not even remotely photorealistic. Like, there is no way in the world I could even conceive of, like, you know... I, I mean, the Skyrim, at least they look kind of human, it's fucked up and weird and kind of physically impossible and there's dragons in the background i mean you gotta think that kind of takes you out of it i don't know and and you couldn't even put giant titties on the dragons i mean (laughs) i mean you're right there yeah (laughs) i mean if you're gonna do it go all the way quick aside somebody pointed out there is a realistic horse genitalia mod to skyrim (laughs) well of of course there's (laughs) some farmer out there with a good internet connection like no 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 I'll show you how it's done. See, see, a lot of people wonder, you know, why aren't video games taken so as seriously as other media? This is part of the reason. <laughs> this is part of the problem. <laughs> the Minecraft mod thing too. It's kind of scary if you watch all these wi- these well, women. These, you know what I mean? These like Lego creatures, like kind of these lines of you. code following. You. They're scary as fuck, though. They chase you around. They just like and they zombie. stare at you with their <laughs> empty, blocky eyes. <laughs> The and then they don't do anything. They just stand there moving their arms back and forth. 
But the author, the author was even like, you know, um, uh, ah, I did this. It was a stupid thing. I oh yeah, he he commented in our comments, didn't he? Yeah, he was pro the video. He's like, yeah, yeah, I deserve it. It was silly. Yeah, I've grown yeah. since then. Blah blah blah. And it's like, all right, fine, well, you know. Of whatever. course, that didn't stop huge controversy from breaking out over the video. No, of course not. And the Skyrim video got, that got even more controversy, and that wasn't linked from an outside source, but it got, like, thousands of comments in a day. I don't understand, though. It's like, I mean, damn. Uh, you know, I guess it's amazing you're able to do that, but why did you do it, and why did you share it with the yeah. world? Wasn't there enough, like, porno? I mean... <laughs> It's easy, yeah. it's easy to find. I bet I could look up some right now, in the middle of this. Maybe yeah. I will. Oh, hey, there's, um, there's some. Oh, uh, let's cut that out. It was actually in my bookmarks, funny enough. <laughs> That's my homepage, actually. <laughs> it's Jeff Lupin, and what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> At least it was right. my homepage until I got to the Skyrim mods. Mm, I know. <laughs> it's, but it's, it's so weird. I... I'm stunned how much controversy that caused. You'd think that'd be a, like a slam dunk, like, hey, let's make fun of this. It seems like you. the kind of thing that people could get behind. I was surprised I got called sex negative in it, which is a new term I had never learned before. What does that mean? Sex negative is when you... Like you're it, asexual? It's like you're prudish, basically. Like you say, like, sex is bad, as a rule. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> Um, I don't even know how to approach that. I know, there's like so many, there's so I mean, many problems. What do you problems. say about that? I, I commented on the video that I felt like our Minecraft video where we, you know, made fun of the guy was the most sex positive thing about the whole experience, <laughs> honestly. Oh, wasn't it the Minecraft video where some guy, and I'm pretty sure he wasn't trying to troll or just stir up shit, mm. was uh, getting on our case for making fun of this guy, you know, breaking out the bullying term for, for, for that oh, video. Oh, God. Oh. And um, he started comparing it to slavery? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That's right. I mean, humans have a history of putting down others. It's much like slavery when putting down the, you know, it's like, oh, my God, is he serious? And I'm, I think he was serious. I, I, say, I say I think he was serious because on the guy's YouTube page, there are a bunch of videos of him covering Lifehouse songs on guitar. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this kind of dopey loser. looking dude, and that's all of his videos. What a. If you're covering loser. Lifehouse songs, then you're probably kind of a loser. So I'm inclined to think that he's not a troll. I. It, it just kills me. It's like. I, I hate when people invoke that, like, oh, you're, you're such a bully. Look how terrible you are and shit. It's like, motherfucker. Like, you're making fun of, like, a fucking five minute YouTube video. Really? Yeah. And you are aware that bullying has a definition that this does not fall under. <laughs> right? I mean, you have do, seen a dictionary recently. Do you remember when uh, we used to do the old Red Soup Parade thread back in the day? And, like, oh. somebody on Let's Play Forum.com was like, people will commit suicide over things <laughs> like this. It's yes. Like, fucking really? Wow. I'm stunned. It's like, if they really commit suicide over this, then they had some other problem that they were not getting treated that caused that. I don't they... think our silly videos are what sealed that envelope. Yeah, I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty much, right? <laughs> right? It's like, no, nah, that didn't kick that rock off that cliff. No, that was I don't think that was there. the tipping point. No, and if not us, then maybe the next day when the clerk didn't have the correct change, that might have done it, too. Yeah. And I want to put this on the flip side, just to do a little feel-good moment here. Sure. And uh, someone on my forum spring said, and I'm just going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume they were serious, uh, they said they were uh, diagnosed with breast cancer a few days ago, and that she had watched our videos and they helped her laugh Aww. through the past few days of, uh, of that. So, you know, that was very touching, and so I'm glad that we do, in some ways, create a positive force in the universe for some people. I, I genuinely do like to hear about those, like, Hey, you did a good thing, kind of deals. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna check my form spring and see if I uh, have anything like that. No, I don't. I have. How do you feel about Doug Walker retiring the Nostalgia <laughs> Critic, which is completely the opposite of what you were just bringing up? Yeah, I'm still kind of surprised. I mean, we did one video on the guy, and mm -hmm. people act like that means we just hate everything the guy does and want him to fail forever. I mean, I and do. sure, he's a little irritating, but. A little I mean, more than a little. More, he's extremely irritating, but we <laughs> no. don't care that much about what he does. 
<laughs> we don't have a United States. We don't even like our video of them. <laughs> we don't. Yeah. No, it's terrible. Um, I'm, to be fair, I've only seen two Nostalgia Critic videos, and he's yeah. 0 for 2 in my mind. Obviously, the Let's Play one, which he didn't like. I felt his room one was pretty bad, too. Um, yeah. I'll, actually, all right. His room review actually got me to see the movie The Room, but then when I saw the movie, I realized he'd kind of spoiled a lot in it, because mm -hmm. he, he kind of just did a... Th to be fair to him, though, even at the beginning, he's like, I don't usually do this sort of thing, but my fans ask me to. So maybe he is kind of a funny guy. I doubt it. Um, <laughs> Somewhat ironically, we fell into the same trap, because people in Let's Play thought we should Red Supray his video. It and did we deserve. did it primarily because of the peer pressure. It did deserve it, though. It it did, but... Even if it wasn't our best thing, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it did deserve it. It I'm did sorry. deserve it, but... Yeah. Kind of like the whole PewDiePie thing, it would have lent itself better to a parody sort of thing in the way that Psychedelic Eyeball did it than... Psych Psychedelic Eyeball did a much, much better job. Absolutely. And Absolutely. again, his video is favorite on our channel. Watch it. Like it. Love it. Live it's, it. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not topical anymore, but yeah, sure, watch it. Um, yeah, watch it. I think we've actually done this in exact segment before on this very podcast. <laughs> Pretty sure we have. Anyway, though, now that he's retiring, I don't care. Exactly. I mean, you know, whatever. What's um, our reaction? All right. I think I think as long as it leads to like somebody pretending to shoot a gun in the air is not happening anymore, that's fine by me. Mm -hmm. But maybe I don't know. Maybe there are some yeah. videos of his. Whoa! Let's talk over oh. my whole laptop there. Sorry. <sighs> we have to scrap this whole podcast. Now. Oh God, no! Jesus Christ! Oh God, I haven't been recording. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, nah, whatever. I mean, Walker, you know. I really, you know, as much I as as much hyperbole as I used, I don't love to begrudge people their success unless they're PewDiePie. Um, but, uh, right. you know, whatever. I'm, you know, not happy or unhappy or whatever. Mazel mm -hmm. tov, whatever. So it goes, as Kurt Vonnegut would say. So it goes. But I'm happy to have helped that woman through her breast cancer. That's great. No, well, that that was me, though, primarily, not, not you. So, you know. I'm sure she got as confused as to think. <laughs> yeah, maybe you'll get somebody on your form spring page say that, like, I had a slight melanoma on my forearm, and your videos helped me through it, Slow Beef. <laughs> oh, God. That's a yeah. start for you. But... Can, I, can I bring up a form spring question I just got now that I'm looking at this? <laughs> okay. We had a Twitter segment going later, but yeah, go ahead. Let's do, let's do that, but let's, I just want to bring this up. Do people on SA look down on posters with more recent reg dates? Okay. Because that's what's been making me avoid signing up for at least four years. Four years? Well, if you had signed up four years ago, that would be an issue now. <laughs> Come on, do the math. There, uh, I'm just going to answer right now. There is a, an inherent... Paradox <laughs> with your question and follow-up statement. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Parentheses, listen to the podcast. I'll be fr <laughs> I should have put that. I'll be frank, yes. I mean, I, I do think so, but mm -hmm. not, not for me. I'm I think it's more when you um, register and post something that very same day. Yeah. I Especially if it's in Let's Play, where it's this big test post i think it'll cause people to look be a little more skeptical but i do think if yeah. it's actual good content then people will look past that i'll admit i, I do sometimes look at the reg date because like yeah so, yeah i think we all do yeah it's just like 2012 uh oh january really okay it shouldn't be that oh. bad you know that kind of thing yeah. but it, it, maybe it, i'll just probate him instead it takes all kinds though you'd be you'd be stunned mm. there's like 2002s with terrible posts it makes no sense and then we, it's all like, wait, how the hell long? Well, you've been here for like 10 years, and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Holy shit, I've been on the forums for eight years. Uh, I don't even think I've been that long. Who's got the earlier reg date, you or me? I think I do. Oh I think, god. aren't you 2005? I am 2005. I'm 2004. May. Oh my god. And, but uh, Proteus, 2001. <laughs> Whoa. Blister, 2000. But who's the mod? <laughs> <gasps> oh! Yeah, fast train to the top. See you, in, uh, see you in 20 years when I own the forums. Hmm. Oh, Someone on our uh, Twitter question, uh, question asked if uh, Proteus would ever be on the podcast, and I, I don't think he is interested. <laughs> I'm happy to, we're happy to have him. No, yeah, yeah. Wrong, he he just doesn't strike me as being like, oh, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, no, basically. Uh, like, yeah. 
Well, the other day, we, I think we mentioned something about it, right? And he was like, you guys are still doing that? Like, meaning oh, yeah. Ratsu Prey? <laughs> you guys are still doing Ratsu Prey? Uh, I, I didn't even notice. Uh. It's, I, I can't even begin to get my voice deep enough to do this. I mean... <laughs> I'm chain-smoking cigarettes right now. It's not helping. <laughs> There's actually a demon living in my esophagus that speaks yeah. for me. But I, I did ask Proteus on Skype if he would want to do Ratsu Prey at some point. He said yes. Yeah, I would do more with him, sure. Why yeah. not? He's on the West Coast, though, so it's just scheduling. Yeah. It's difficult. Every so often, too, we talk about programming, you know, which is very, like, odd now. You know what Ooh, I mean? That's a hot podcast topic. <laughs> but Ooh, let me up. tune into that one. No, we no joke, though. We make Retsu Prey other people's code. <laughs> Retsu Talk, episode 10 with Slow Beef and Proteus. I rate that a C++. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a program thing. C, that's sharp. Uh, I'll edit that out. Um, Let's just go on. Um, yes. Uh, what about video games? We're on a video game podcast, right? Huh? What about video games? What about them? Do we want to talk about video games? Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. I wanted to plug a couple of Let's Plays. Um, I wanted to plug um, Hello Winter's Phoenix Wright Let's Play. Tell me a little about that, because Phoenix Wright used to be one of those... Uh, you know, stay away from sort of things where it's like, yeah, no, you can't LP. No one can LP Phoenix Wright. And I'll screenshots be, have their flaws. Video has its flaws. It can't be done. I'll How be, did it get done, Slow Beef? I'll be completely frank. I was a champion of that anti Let's Play Brigade. Um, Phoenix Wright uh, was a very smart. It's at its core an adventure game, but um, it, it was way too text heavy to do straight up video with. You know, because all the characters spoke in textual dialogue in the boxes below. Mm -hmm. But what was really cool about the game is all the characters had little animations and they had tons of really good audio cues. Like, people would crash into scenes and, you know what I mean? Like, things like mm -hmm. that. The whole objection thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. But even, even more than that, like, the, the head detective guy would be like, would be like, just crash into a scene like, hey, pal, are you talking about me? You know? And it was kind of, like, silly. Um, it was, it's... You've never played the Phoenix Rights at all, right? I have not, no. I don't do mobile gaming. Um, really at all? Not, I, I used to, but no, I just don't get into it as much now. You know Phoenix Rights on the, iP on the uh, iOS devices. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, it is. Seriously. Hmm. Capcom's totally pro, um, like, iPhone, Android stuff, I think. Hmm. Um, yeah, will no, it I run on iOS 6? I believe it will. Holy shit. Um, so, the... All right, so Phoenix Wright, to just take it one more step back, it's this very, it, I don't even think this is on purpose, but it's this sort of perfect marriage of a parody of Western courtroom drama and Eastern animation. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's like the, the drama doesn't make sense, but it kind of ropes you in, you know, because the characters are all really likable. And then things start to go in jeopardy, and it starts in really stupid ways, but then you actually kind of get into it. So the, the reason it's tough to Let's Play is because, again, the, the direction is amazing on it, where there's certain animations, like certain music numbers actually come in, like, mid-dialogue box at the right music places. Music numbers? Or, not music, I, like... Oh, cues, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, okay, okay. there's, like, one famous one called Cornered, which is, like, a really excellent tune, especially given that it was on a fucking Game Boy Advance. But, like, at one point, like, Phoenix will be, like, he'll say something like, um, you want to see the proof? And then that music will come in and he goes, well, here it is! You know? And hmm. it's, like, very well-timed. And it's if you do it in just total screenshot, you lose a lot of that. I and see. If, okay. And if you do it in video, obviously, the lower portions where they're just, you know... Text is just being transcribed is kind of It just of gets kind of tedious. Yeah. And hybrid's tough, too. So this poster named Mega64 did it with animated GIFs and, you know, links to the soundtrack. And I think I think that at that point, when he had put that much effort in, we were all kind of like, well, you know what, it's not perfect, but maybe we should just knock it off and realize people do want to see this game and don't own it. So mm -hmm. Sure. And it was actually really, really well done. But he couldn't finish it, and now this other one, uh, this other poster, uh, her name is Hello Winter, is doing it, and she's adding her own fan art to it. But she's oh, actually, awesome. yeah, she's actually like a good artist and stuff, so she's doing a great job with it. So, oh, great, absolutely, good job, Hello Winter. So I have to read Danganronpa and this now. Yeah, um, it's a mighty undertaking. They're, they're and they're so linked; it's very weird. 
Like you, if, that was going to be my question. Is that what you were describing from Phoenix Wright sounds very similar to what you've been describing on the previous podcast with Danganronpa? Danganronpa is. So it, does one take inspiration from the other? Oh, uh, very obviously so. Okay, um, which would, from which? I would which say, came first? I would say, well, Phoenix Wright. I would say. Okay. I would almost say that I feel, even though it was Spike Chunsoft, and I don't know that it had anything to do with Sony. I don't, and again, Capcom made Phoenix Wright, so it had nothing to do with Nintendo. I just feel like somebody on the Sony side was like, look, this Phoenix Wright game is really picking up. We need to do something with it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And they're looking at how funny Phoenix Wright is, and somebody comes up with, what if we did Phoenix Wright but really fucking dark? And it's like, it's uh, still funny, but it's horrible in the same way. Huh. The thing I really like, I mean, I think it, it's interesting because... Um, some people have, like, or one of the thread suggestions, because the Oren Ronin, the guy who does the Danganronpa thread, started a games thread, and I suggested the thread title to him be, like, uh, Danganronpa is basically Ace Attorney meets Battle Royale, <laughs> but it's it's a little more like Ace Attorney meets, and there were n- and then there were none. You know that Agatha Christie story? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tenable Indians, cool. well, and it's, <laughs> it's other mm-hmm. titles. Um... But basically, like, Phoenix Wright has a lot of very memorable characters, and they kind of prop up again, and it's sort of funny to see them again, and then they kind of get in jeopardy, but, you know, not really. Danganronpa comes up with these really likable characters, but it kind of makes it clear, like, look, they all gotta go. Like, we're gonna whittle them down, and they're actually going to die. But you don't know who's gonna die and that's, when. It, it, yeah, and that's what gets kind of tense about it. Mm. You know, because you're like, holy shit, wait. And then, like, all of us in the thread are like, I really like this character. I, I don't want to see them go, and then they go. And so is that why the thread is, the Deck and Rampa thread is so fucking huge, is that there's just constant speculation between the updates? Yeah, basically. That's why the thread's so intimidating, because it's like a billion-page thread, and then... It takes, a, even Whoa. if you're, I'll admit, even if you're, ta- if, even if you're um, uh, uh, just reading the OP's posts, it's a big thread. Mm. Um, and when people recommended it to me at first, I didn't really care for it because the first few pages they're introducing the characters, and there's there's fucking fifteen of them, which I, is kind of tedious. You so know, does each get his or her own intro? Yes, and they're they're yeah. all kind of interesting, but and some of them are one dimensional. Don't get me wrong, but it's like sure. there's one guy like we call Super Goon or Ultra Goon, who's like <laughs> a really fat guy, and his so all the characters in the game have like a super high school level thing and the, like they're like a, a character and they have some one great thing about them and his he's like a fan fiction author basically <laughs> and that's his whole character and he's like he, and throughout the game when they talk so about so he's the one that the threat is pulling for to survive <laughs> yeah basically but like through the whole game they talk about sex stuff and he's like I'm only interested in 2D girls <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like wow. he was written for me but then there's this other girl, she's the super high school level literary girl, who's also kind of like that. Like, she's into, yeah. she's really into this other guy, and she's like, oh, I really like you. Listen, if you want to, like, put a a, um, a sign around me that says trash girl and throw garbage at me, that'd be great. And she says, like, really fucked up creepy things like that what? out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, okay, that's, that's fucked up. But, um, huh. anyway, I think, but I, what I like about, um, what I like about Danganronpa what I like about both games, really, is Phoenix Wright completely eschews any sort of standard Japanese character animation kind of things. Like, he has, like, a, a, a <laughs> to quote the Minecraft mod, a female companion. But there's no, like, romantic thing or anything, you know what I mean? It's just, like, it is what it is. Like, they're partners, and they have a good, friendly relationship, and you that never even comes into it. In the internet world, that's impossible. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's art or fiction or whatever the hell. And but Danganronpa, what's kind of cool about it is it starts to lead you down paths like that, where it says like, "Hey, you've seen anime, you know what's going to happen with this character," and "Hey, you've seen," and then it completely one eighties them, and oh, it really? even it doesn't even just do the opposite of what you're expecting. So even if you're expecting it to do that, it does. It kind of like takes them in weird new directions. So you're like, "Well, I wasn't seeing that coming at all." Hmm. Yeah, it's it's very. They're both very cool games. Hmm. Um. I mean, for God's sakes, I, I fucking played through Danganronpa in Japanese now. I mean, that's crazy. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so you know everything that happens now, right? I do, yeah. It's, it's killing me not to post. But, um, I don't, I'm sorry, this is like the third, I think, podcast we've had that I've, like, gushed about Danganronpa, mm-hmm. so... Well, there's some uh, other good Let's Plays to recommend. Mm-hmm. 
So, a uh, friend of the show, Mecha Prime, is doing a Let's Play of BS Zelda, or Zelda, um, what's it, shit, what's it called? No Densetsu? Densetsu, yeah. Zelda's Adventure, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think that's like the official title. But that's a game that was an expanded version of the original Zelda game for the NES. But it was done in this really weird way through this thing called Saddle of You. Yeah, it was like broadcast satellite, right? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, referred to commonly as like BSX, which is not a Metroid Fusion enemy, but is in fact a satellite thingy that you download, but it was done live. So you'd have to download it onto... This was like in ancient times before internet shit made this easy. But you would download episodes that were released on a weekly basis, I believe. And so you'd only have a certain amount of time to play through each of the episodes. I'm, I'm just going to be frank. I have never understood the broadcast satellite thing, no matter how I, many I still don't. I mean, I'm trying to explain it, but it still doesn't make any sense to me. Was it like a TV show kind of thing where it's like you have to play between like five and six, let's say, to get the new episode? Is that the idea? Well, it was. it's four weekly episodes, so I don't think you're required to play. You were, you were required to play one to advance to the second. It was just like, this one is available now. You can play it now. And well, if you didn't play the earlier one, then you're just kind of fucked and you can't play it. But what was the point of that? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's presentation is a lot like Mario All-Stars in that it just took the old Zelda and gave it SNES graphics. See, that's all I wanted when I was younger. And then when I heard about Zelda no Dentetsu BS X Hyper Glove Dang, Danganronpa style, you mm, know, I, um, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I was always interested in it, but then like, I'd hear like, oh no, you get a new dungeon a week. And it's like, what are you talking about that, you yeah. know? But there, a uh, emulation was released of the game somehow that got it all packed into one single game that you can play like now just on your own. So you can play them all, and that's what Mecha Prime is showing off now. So I mean, right now it seems very largely just you know, like I said, Zelda with Mario All Stars graphics or with SNES graphics. So the dungeons are pretty much the same. The world map is reduced a lot, which cuts out uh, a lot of fluff that was in the original NES Zelda. Sure. And uh, there's this thing where the dungeons are redesigned, so each dungeon spells out a letter, like when you pick up the map. Yeah, yeah, And you yeah. see the whole dungeon, you see a letter of the alphabet, and it spells out, I think it's supposed to spell it like Saint something, because the I videos guess. I've seen so far, it's spelled out S-T, or T with a period, and then G-I is what it's spelled out so far, so I don't yeah. know if it's like Saint... Uh, I think Saint Giga was like the name of the radio Giga, Giga, something like that. Something. Giga. Giga? You know, technically Jigga. Jigga. Jigga what? <laughs> That's like, it's a weird thing, and Back, Back to the Future ended up apparently getting that right. Like, it's gigawatts and gigabytes and all that, but we call it, you know, Giga. Mm. Gigahertz and all that crap. Anyway. Um, I'll, I'll be titling this podcast, uh, Jigga what? I'm a big, I'm a big Mecha Prime fan, honestly. Mm. Yeah, he did uh, the Metroid, he did Metroid Fusion recently. That fucker. Mm-hmm. Well, he's banned. But, yeah, well, yeah, I've been campaigning for that for years. Oh, and uh, the Zelda BS game, you can also play as Zelda. <laughs> oh, oh, did I just blow your fucking mind away or what? I didn't, you know, I didn't think women could make good video game heroines until, ironically, I saw this Minecraft mod. Well, and now I'm like, well, yeah, sure. Hey. To be fair, video games for you started with Metroid Other M, so that's a reasonable way to think. <laughs> More or less, basically. Mm-hmm. I like Mecha Prime a lot, though. He does good stuff. Yeah, he, he does good threads. He does, uh, what I very much admire is that he does most of his videos solo, but he remains engaging throughout. Mm hmm And that's something I admire, because I think it's very difficult to do that. You know, yeah, absolutely. So, good on you, Mecha Prime. I didn't intend to plug him when I, when we started this podcast, but you know, you know who is another, uh, good one is, um, Simply Simon? Oh, yeah. Did you ever yeah. watch his Mega Man Let's I did, Plays? yeah. He did... All of the NES Mega Man games. Those are excellent beyond belief. Mm -hmm. I and then I would even go so far as to say is I was stunned at how good a job he did with those. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's the way he does it is really interesting because you know most of the people watching will have played the Mega Man games in their childhoods and whatnot, but he gives this really unique, fresh perspective where he kind of does a critical analysis of each level he plays. Yeah, it's like incredible. Yeah, he just breaks it down so well, and I think that's just a very... It's a very new way to get back into Mega Man again, if you haven't played those games in a while. And, he, he, yeah, like, fresh perspective is the way to put it, too, because even, like, things that when you play the games, you know, over and over again, 
uh, that you just take for granted, where he's like, you know, top spin, not that bad a weapon. And you're like, yeah. I'm sorry, what? It's not just for going through boss doors. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, he's like, this is why you use it and such. And he sh- actually show it's like really well done. Because mm-hmm. I think games like that too, like you, you play them a certain way and everyone kind of gets into that established path. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, and when he plays through the games, he he just and he kind of nixes the Mega Buster and plays through the levels with you know different robot weapons as it shows not just for a gimmick's sake, but to show just their utility. Absolutely, you know, very good. You know who else is good along that vein too is Dectalon. Mm-hmm. I love doing videos with Dectalon, um, friend of the show. I've, we've been talking about getting him in, or I've been talking to him about getting him in on a podcast. Um, I wanted to do this thing where we talk about hard games. I would, I would love, love, love that. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be a really cool theme thing to do because Dectalon is all about difficult video games. Yeah, exactly. No, and he has a he has a thread. Um, I I'm forgetting the name of the game altogether. It's this Gradius like shooter, a uh, Hydra, Hydra. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's H Y D O. Wait, H Y H Y D O R A H R O A H, or is it O R A H? It's Hydor. Ah, ah. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I thought I was thinking Hydro. Ah, mm-hmm. but it's oh. not. Ah. Yeah, but Declan, I'm sure you're listening to this. We'll get you on at some point. Absolutely. Talk about hard games. And why not? Why not Mecha Prime too? Yeah, and Metroixer. I like why not every too. goon? Hello Winter, you're mm-hmm. on. Orin Ronin, you two, everyone. Figgle, <laughs> Figgle. I like Figgle. Like Figgle's man. awesome. Figgle does amazing video editing. Just throwing that out there. This is like, by the way, the, the diametrical opposite of what we usually do with Retsu Prey. Where yeah. this, this started out like, I fucking hate PewDiePie, but I love Matrix, sir. You know, that kind of thing. It's a little bit of Retsu Wove getting <laughs> thrown out there. We'll be right back. Um, <laughs> let's, well done. Um, uh, another thread that we had both talked about is, um, you'll need to tell me the guy's name, the guy doing the Binding of Isaac Let's Play. I want to say Zyder is how you pronounce it, but it's X A I T E R. Mm-hmm. One of those great threads that got me to bite the game. Buy the game, not bite mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And bite, bite it. And bite it. Um, bite it by dying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy now. <laughs> it's a hard game. And he, he really masters it. I, oh, yeah, he's all about presentation. He cuts out all the bullshit of you know, backtracking, tedious rooms, and just has this kind of NPR like presentation to it. And and he doesn't just smash cut Billy MC. Mm-hmm. I feel like I said that like Tobias from Arrested Development. Like, and he doesn't just lie there like a dead fish, Billy MC. Wow. <laughs> he crossfades. <laughs> he does, but it's very well done. He like knows what to cut out and what to keep in. It's it, it's and it's it's tough with a game like that too. But he really kind of gets like this is interesting. This is not. You know. Yeah. Exactly. And he does very um, natural transitions between the rooms, mm-hmm. you know? Well, yeah, just come along with me into the next room. Absolutely. You don't need to watch all of this. Mm-hmm. His, and I think run six is amazing. Because uh, that's the one where he goes to the womb and he doesn't have a lot of life left. So you're, like, watching the video, like, kind of biting your lip, like, I don't mm. know. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't think I've seen that one. Uh, yeah, it's... I. I think he's done seven runs in the OP, and then it's the second to last one, so it's run six. Hmm. Very well. Binding of Isaac is killing me right now, because I'm at the point where I've beat the game enough times to where on the title screen, it looks like a puzzle piece being put together, or a puzzle board being put together of Isaac's bedroom, and each time you beat the game, each subsequent time, a part of that uh, puzzle piece gets put in, and I think mm-hmm. I have to beat the game two more times, but I'm having a hell of a time doing so. But I want to I- know what happens when you put that puzzle together. I still have the cracked heart kind of thing. Uh, just get out. I guess I should. I was so pissed off. I had Technology 2 in one of my games, mm. but I got no tears up at all. I ended up dying. Like, nothing worked. Mm. So. so when you get tears up, the laser fires faster? Yeah, and then it gets, like, I think it even gets... Well, it gets stronger is the better point to it, because otherwise you just have to, like, sit there and dance around. Like, mm-hmm. one game I think I got, Technology and Polyphemus, or one of the major damage boosters. Yeah, and, Polyphemus is an awesome upgrade. Yeah, and it was pretty much like, okay, well, now I've won mm-hmm. the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've never gotten an Explosive Tears upgrade, though. Fucking stupid game. I don't like the Explosive Tears upgrade. It has, it has fucked me more than it has helped me. I'm imagining if, like, an enemy gets too close to you. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. if, like, you... If you 
if you, uh, there's a wall of rocks in front of you and you uh, fire, it'll just explode right there and do a heart of damage to you. The one thing I don't like about Binding of Isaac is I feel like the color scheme gets a little samey. So I'll play, mm-hmm. on, I'll play it on the bus on the way to work, and if, like, let's say the bus makes a turn and the sunshine comes in and reflects off my laptop, now you might say, well, that's not really the Binding of Isaac's fault. But the problem is, like, a brown rock versus a brown floor, when you're squinting, even with the brightness up and you can kind of see things, it, like, blends together. Mm. Like, I just feel like a lot of... I, I like the game, but, like, a lot of the colors are just sort of bland and similar, you know? Yeah, I can see that. If you've been playing the game for a long period of time, your mind can kind of get bleh. Yeah. I just, I mean, and again, I'm not trying to blame the Blinding of Isaacs for, like, oh, the sun's in my eyes or some shit like that. I'm just saying that, like, I feel like with other games, I don't have a similar problem because I can kind of, at least, like, when I have to squint, I can tell, here's my player, here's the enemies, here's the general layout of the level. Mm-hmm. Binding of Isaac, I just feel like, is kind of like, wait, oh, I'm on a rock, duh, mm-hmm. you know? But you did give your bus a negative Yelp review, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. It sounds like it's mostly their fault. I would say so. Okay. Um, well, 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 shit, we've been talking for a while. We're closing in on an hour. Are we? Oh, well, we hour. are. We've been recording for about an hour. Should we do Twitter shit, or what? We, I think we can, if you're up for it. If you're brave yeah. enough. What the, um, I, I hope I am. Yeah. Do we, need, do we need to take a break before then? Would you want to take a break? Uh, I kind of want to refill my drink. All right, I'll do the same. Okay. We'll, right. we'll be right back with more Retsu Talk. Okay. Oh, God. Guru Nebulae asks, Question, is it weird and... Wrong slash. Is it yes. weird and or off-putting if you've ever met someone you've read to prayed before? Uh, met, well, we've met John. That's exactly what I was going to say. The answer is no. Next. And he was on our podcast. That's right. Uh, one person... Shit, where am I? Uh, at Ice Dust... What's the opening song from episode 8 of Retsu Talk? I'm overcome with the urge to buy whatever it's from. And uh, I can answer that. That is from Sega Sky, the same person who did the Gillian Seed intro for this one. Uh, it was, it was, as far as I know, it was an original composition. A little accolades, some props Absolutely. there. Sega Sky is like the Ubermensch. Yeah, yeah, Sega Sky does some good shit. We should get him on here. You should get him on here to talk about the making of podcast intro songs. <laughs> and then kick his ass out. Um, so there's that question um spider hyphen man has a terrible question so we'll move on um pixel i'm just gonna gonna ask this just because it's funny to me and it's relevant in the news at jeeves meister do you think we should be able to roll down windows on a plane and for those of you not following political news that's uh something that mitt romney said fairly recently (laughs) I, I missed that one. He so his wife, uh, his she was on a plane and she had to have the plane she was on had to have an emergency landing, and so Mitt Romney was at this campaign stop and he was saying like, "Gosh, you know, I was just really worried about it. You know, why don't they let you roll down windows on planes?" Oh dear. Talking about trying to is like yeah. Okay. Oh dear. Mitt Romney. <sighs> he's yeah. he's trying to lose, right? Anyway. I, that's that's my that's my thought. <laughs> this break, this break he's he's trolling the election. That's great. Yeah, it's great. Um, Mickinator two hundred wants to know: Can you make moonshine? You diabetes? <laughs> I cannot. Um, I am a fan of whiskey, so I yeah. do adhere to those particular stereotypes. But whiskey I've not nice. learned how to make my own yet. I've had moonshine before, and it is swell. Mm. It is seriously the most disgusting thing you've ever tasted in your mm. whole fucking life. I am working on some DIY insulin, but it's not going very well. Can I just throw out too, by the way, um, for those of you who go to a liquor store and buy like a little jug of moonshine, I'm talking about this, the security guard at MTV back when I worked there made moonshine in his bathtub. Like, moonshine, moonshine. His bathtub? Yes. Hmm. He didn't bathe in it. I mean, you know, he had like a spare bath. Well, I, I would do both at the same time. Well, you know, why not? But no, it's, it's swill. It's swill. Hmm. Swill. Swill. Anyway, next question. The word of today is swill. Swill. Uh, at Chew- Jew Chewer, do you have any pets? I have a cat. I do not. 
Uh, we... You have a fiancé. Boom! Bam. Bam! It happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Gotcha, it, it, podcasting. It did, it did happen. <laughs> yeah, it's now... <laughs> Jeff Lupin then shaking his head and saying, Classic diabetes. <laughs> That's uh, my red suit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Wait, that's that's Ridley Gear, not Metal Gear. Sorry. <laughs> Thunderman, why you <laughs> this podcast so much? It's ridiculous. Someone pointed out, by the way, that was pretty much the Jalo voice. Which, it was. It, yeah, they, whoever said that was right. It was devolving into that. I didn't even realize that. Honestly, yeah. I, guess I think all of our impressions kind of moved towards the Ridley Jalo spectrum eventually. You go more of a Zoidberg like Slendham and you're really going to do the podcast. I like it both. Um, Flavin. Let's see. It's... At Shadow Boy Tyler, interesting question. What was the longest time you spent playing a game in a single play session and what game was it? <laughs> um, <laughs> I would. <laughs> the longest in recent memory, I think. Might have been you and I playing Resident Evil Five Co-op, the game, aka the game that would not end. Oh shit! I think you're right. I think we spent like at least eight plus hours once. Oh god, I was like, we were up to like, like. Oh five shit! Or we were something. like five in the morning. I, yeah. Oh yeah, we were finishing the game, weren't we? Yeah, and it wouldn't end, and then like. Oh, it's not that not just that it wouldn't end, but we were having trouble with the Wesker fight towards the end. Yeah, and we were laughing too hard when he caught the rocket launcher. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> He's like wrestling with it. He's <laughs> like, what am I gonna do with this rocket? Oh, get this out of my face! <laughs> He's like mildly I, irritated that a rocket's trying to blow his face off. I kind of wish we had gone ahead with that co-op RE5 LP. Yeah, though Archimp Cola and um, Sinatra Pod, Sinatra Pod, yeah, uh, did a did an LP of that. It's quite good. I've heard it's great. I haven't watched it. Mm-hmm. Everyone keeps telling me it's like the funniest fucking thing. Yeah, Archimp Cola's hilarious. He is. He is hilarious. But good bro. Need to get um, him on the podcast. No, I'd love you. Um, I would love that. And replace yeah. who? You? Yes. Okay. Both um, of us, really. Just have him. Yeah. Just have them talk. do it. Yeah. Just have them to be Rusty Prey. Let's Just have him talk to Dave. I think that would be more entertaining. I think so. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you call it? Let's keep it simple. Okay. Says. That's uh, not a question. Kenichi Joji. What do you personally. Think the most successful console in history has been? Also, favorite console. Mm, well, isn't the Wii kind of, like, as far as the numbers go, the most successful? I would have thought the classic NES, actually. Like, the mm. original, because, like, if you talk about the most games sold for a particular console, I mean, it pretty much dominated, True. right? Well, you have your marketing shit. Can you adjust for inflation and shit like that? I think I can. I think the, the trick there is that Nintendo gets the licensing fee whenever you sell any game for the console. As all, as any of them do. So I'm just saying, like, this unfettered, like, what was it, 90, 85 to, when did the next one, I don't know, 90, let's just say, hypothetically. You have this, like, five-year block where you pretty much have no competition. So That's a good, I, that's a good point, yeah. I, I think that. Um, again, and the problem with the Wii was, um, there, that reminds me, I got my paper back. Um, but anyway, the problem, I, again, I had with the Wii, which at least my professor agreed with, is that the console sales went well, the game sales kind of died down toward the end. Yeah. Um, to be fair, your professor's total Sony fanboy. I got a good grade on it, though. I will say that. Mm. So there is that, and I don't There's think you knew what I was talking about. But um, <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, I just I pretty much parroted everything I've said in these podcasts, and he thought that was good enough. You you sourced the podcast in your references section. Oh, I so certainly did. If you listen to Retsu talk, I drew a perception map, motherfucker. So oh shit, I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty. Uh... Pretty legit. Yeah, it is. Totally. Yeah. Um, anyhow. You want to go for the next one? Uh, at the, the, the idea of uh, talk about I Want to Be the Guy. Yeah, I've played it. It's okay. So here's the thing, in my opinion. Okay. There are, there are two different kinds of hard games. No, One sure. is the kind of hard game that is what I would call bullshit, and that you have to learn by the game design rather than by your own skill. Mm-hmm. And so you have to learn where these bullshit moments are, and then it's just a matter of memorization and getting around them. Mm-hmm. Whereas with a game like Super Meat Boy, if you're really good at platformers, then you could probably beat several difficult levels on your first or second try. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of 
my distinction. Like, good hard games now are on the ladder. I, um... I I think I want to be the guy who fills a certain niche, but it doesn't quite parody what it's trying to parody. Mm-hmm. The games weren't really like that at all, even when they were really hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I want to be the guy who would go out of its way to do dick things like kill you right before the save point kind of thing. Yeah, you know like, what I mean? It's like trying to be a satire, but it's just kind of too irritating to be fun. You know, though, I mean, I'll, I'll give it, it's, it's it, some props in that it's its own thing. It's just that, like, I know Kaya Nasaki writes it as, like, it's a love letter to old Nintendo hard games, and, like, right. having grown up in that era, I'm like, this doesn't remind me of any of that. You know what I mean? Like, this, this doesn't, that doesn't ring true at all, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's its own thing. It's, it's supposed to be a bullshit unfair game, and it mm-hmm. is, and it's not fun to play, so... Yeah, you know, and that's rocks. the only reason why I'm sort of good at Battletoads, is just muscle memory of remembering so much about that game makes some parts of it much easier, but even right. then, some parts of it are just so hard that even knowing what comes is just still makes it fucking impossible. But, like, that's the thing, like, Battletoads was bullshit, but it, it wasn't the same kind of bullshit, and in that sense, like, I, I don't see the, the parody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. It's not like you were doing the It also the tur- wasn't programmed very well. No, that's the thing. Battletoads, I think, was just more of a failure of, like, balancing. Yeah, there you, you know? go. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't do, like, scaling very well. Mm. And... But there, it wasn't like you were going through the turbo tunnel, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they gave you, like... You know the end of the turbo tunnel where you go up, down, up, down, and it gets faster and faster yeah, and yeah, faster? Yeah, yeah, you just have to have fast reflexes. Yeah, it would have been bullshit if, like, out of nowhere they just went down, down, toward the end. Yeah, yeah. To fuck with you. That's, like, the mm-hmm. kind of thing I want to be the guy would do, but Battletoads wouldn't. Battletoads yeah. was just more like The that. Super Nintendo Battletoads did do some shit like that. Did it? I'm, oh. There was a ver- they had their own Super uh, Turbo Tunnel in the Super NES version, where you would have this ramp before some uh, concrete slabs on the ground, and you have to, you know, get on the ramp to jump over them. But then right after that, there would be another ramp, and all the concrete slabs would be floating in the air, so you have to intentionally dodge that ramp and go under them. But there's okay. no way you would know that until you die the first time you oh, come across them. I stand corrected then. Kai and yeah. Nasaki, you're, you're the best. Um, and there's that. And there's that. Yeah. Uh, JS Nay 20 uh, what has been your favorite Ruts You Pray to record? Also, beat us, Auburn or Alabama? I assume this is a fellow Alabama native. Auburn or Alabama? Auburn or Alabama is probably the most intense college football rivalry rivalry in the country. No, if you're in the Big Ten, you might say Ohio, Michigan. Oh, um, you know, right, but, sure. Or so I'm sorry, Ohio State, Michigan. I don't know what he's talking yeah. about. This is SEC football, my friend. Oh dear. Yeah, um, I, I go for Auburn. All much right. to my chagrin, right now. Um, and uh, so, favorite RP to record. Alabama. Um, I, I read you pray Alabama every day. I get. Huh. Favorite to record. You know what I was thinking of the. Well, nah, I don't know. I was gonna say I remember one video, or I can't remember exactly which video it is, and I don't want this to come off like circle jerky, but it was maybe the funniest thing I feel like you've ever said in the history of Retsu Prey, <laughs> and I don't remember the video, but you're making fun of the guy. And then you go, you know, I'm joking, but he's actually saying these things. Uh, I don't know what that is. I I just remember that was like no. I was watching that again. Like that was fucking great. <laughs> um, I I think that um, I like the wrong praise in a way too because it's a video where you and I don't necessarily know what's going to come next. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like maybe the first wrong prey, uh, which was Last Alert, or maybe even the oh, one Last after that, Alert. it was just so new that it was just kind of a refreshing thing to do, making fun of something kind of more long form. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember Last Alert. Did we already talk about the story about how that came to be? I don't think in the podcast we did. So, um, uh, tip- so diabetes will take business trips in my area, and I typically mm-hmm. don't do the same just because I don't take as many trips there's no business in alabama also so no basically yeah there's that um and w- w- what i like to do is we like to like do a retsu fresh or something that's a little easier to do in person but right. when he was coming up that time i didn't have anything i couldn't think of any you know retsu fresh or whatever so 
I had just happened to be reminded of Last Alert just by some thing. So, you know, it lands in New York. We met up, you know, had dinner, a couple drinks, whatever. And I'm like, all I got is Last Alert. So we ended up going to, um, because my office was nearby, I went to a conference room. <laughs> and we started watching Last Alert and making fun of it and shit. And it totally worked out. And then, because we hadn't done a, a wrong prey before. And the next day, I was even like, I don't know if we should post this, because this is like a really lazy Let's Play. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm glad to because that was very fucking funny. Didn't accomplish anything I actually came to New York for, flew back the next day. Well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, Dark Seed 2 was a lot of fun for me, just holding on to the ending. It was so long, though. I know. Uh, if only, you know, but... Yeah. <sighs> I mean, just, it was killing me. But just, like, when he's, like, just That's so the near at the, the end? Yes. Yeah. When he's, like, just outside the room, and I'm, like, in my mind, I'm, like, please, just go in, go in, go in, goddamn. You know. See, but. I remembered at the beginning when you asked me if I knew anything about Dark Sea 2. Um, I'd known just from, like, the screenshot LPs you had done in the past that there was a head explosion consistency in them. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh, I, th I think there's, like, a head explosion at some point. And then, like, you know, eight hours had gone by, or six or seven <laughs> hours had gone by, and I'd just kind of forgotten about that. <laughs> well, like, and I know, I was crazy. I would, like, I, would, I would went through all our YouTube comments. I deleted a couple that mentioned the fucking mom's head. <laughs> it was like, I can't know about this. Um, and it surprised me. It legit surprised me. I'm trying to think As I think the video proves. Actually, you know, Corn Shack was a pretty great video that the three of us did. Wasn't that the first video we ever did? No. Um, what did we I, do before that? Or no, we did the, um, shit, what was that, NES Dungeon Crawler game? Oh, yeah, Wizardry. Wizardry. Chaz, Wizardry um, 5. Was Chaz, that the first? His name was Chaz something. Chaz I guess. Dragoon, I think? Yeah, that's it, that's it. Because he was like, I just cast a spell. Whoops! Ah, that's it, the whoops guy. Yeah, the whoops guy. That was the first one we did. And then it was Corn Shack. And, um, okay, that sounds right. The third video, which we had posted in the Sand Castle, I'm kind of blanking on, but the fourth was Billy MC, which is what we opened the thread with. Oh, Billy was the fourth? He was that early? Yeah. You know what it was? The third one was um, the Resident Evil 4 guy, uh, Wizwar, the... Oh, um, Herb? Herb, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bad physics! That guy. <laughs> That's right. Corn Shack, which Corn Shack was fucking hilarious, though. I will say, actually, um, and I know you and I hadn't done this, but Proteus and I doing the Monster in My Pocket video. I, I like that one a lot. That yeah, was yeah, yeah. so fucking good. The Tyler Douchebag one, right? Oh, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And you know what's funny? Because at the time, I don't know what it was. It was just like, because the guy's like, uh, you know, could you please go, Tyler? And Proteus <laughs> is going to say something. But if you listen, I go, wait, 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 because I just had this feeling. And he go, that's what he goes, like, you're just being a petty little douchebag. And then we just fucking burst out laughing. <laughs> that, might, that might have been one of my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. That one was good. I, will, I do like the Survival Kids one, so that was a very good, very good job there. Survival. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give props to your SNES uh, 9X thing as well. Yeah. Avant-garde. Avant-garde. Ahead of its time. Yeah. No. Um, I hard to believe all this shit was like four years ago. I know, right? It seems like it seems like only yesterday. Yeah. And we, we um, hit our 50,000 mark recently. Oh, yeah. 50,000 subscribers. How about that? Who cares? I mean, it's not the uh, kind of thing to harp on, but yay? I don't know. I know. And I think now we can go f say we're going from quadruple Z-list to triple Z-list. And, I mean, fucking Jeff Lupin likes us, so hey, you know. We finally have enough legitimacy to scare cam ourselves over stuff. I think we went from triple Z list, but then when people heard the Jeff Lupin in intro to the podcast, we're pretty much up at that, the Z low. Yeah, level. that pushed it over. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, how could it not? Finally. <laughs> My wife say, Aka says. Um, see, see, at the end for us, uh, this is a question for you, I believe. What's the story behind that Holy Umbrella video that got cut short? Oh, this was... Um, back in the Circle Jerk days of Let's Play, which were fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just a couple of days ago. Boom! See. Were you in that? You weren't in that, right? I think I was in Holy Umbrella. There was... This was a whole bunch of people, right? The whole train wreck thing where you had like a Skype yeah. call of ten people and you just recorded the Skype call and... Yeah, like Guido Anchovies was in it and Cherry Doom. Um, Holy Umbrella is this weird-ass Japanese game we just decided to play out of the blue. And then we started to like... <laughs> We did the thing, which actually wasn't too bad, where we would try to voice what they were saying, like, obviously not knowing anything about Japanese, you know, just kind of making our own translation, 
And what was kind of funny about it was the first boss of the game ends up being this, like, robot that's got the upper body of a humanoid robot, the lower body of a tank, but the turret of the tank is coming right where his dick would be. Oh, so, I remember that. Yeah, because, yeah. like, for five minutes we're just bullshitting about this silly game, and then that comes out the first boss, yeah. and we all just burst out laughing. <laughs> we ended up doing, like, an hour of it, and what's sort of fucked up about that boss, um, which I, I don't know why like, I lost the original recordings, is he, he'll, like, fire out of that turret and kind of make this face like he's coming or whatever. <laughs> and then he's a recurring boss, and each time that turret gets, like, bigger and more dick-like. It's, like, really a fucked-up game. Um, apparently, too, on romhacking.net, they ended up translating it to English for God knows what reason. Well, finally. Mm. Never since Police Knots has something been in high demand. <laughs> Basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Forget that dang and Ronba bullshit. Get me the dick tank. <laughs> And the translation did say it was a dick tank, right? Absolutely, yes. That's what I figured, okay. Absolutely. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm, I'm trying to like look for a good question here. Um, this is something oh. we've been asked a few times, but at Sharjinjuku, will you guys be looking into the game Grumps? I've, I've heard of them, but I don't really know what or who they are. Not anymore. Because um, I'll tell you, I considered it. Uh, I, I considered the Game Grumps. I watched one of their videos, and um, I'm like, oh, they have a stupid theme song, and it, this is just <laughs> another angry gamer kind of bullshit, but they're not even angry. But then I, I have to give them credit because I was reading a thing recently how they completely called out PewDiePie, and oh. they're like, I'm sorry, I, I don't care if it looks like this is YouTube Envy or some shit. This is sh unwatchable schlock. And I'm like, thank you. Yes, oh, well, thank okay. you. So now I am pro... I've never watched their videos, really. But I'm pro Game Grumps now. Okay. PewDiePie is unwatchable schlock. Mm. Anyway, sorry. Good. Um, let's see. Um, at Lily7201 asks, why do you say dead to rights at the end of some videos? Oh. Well, first of all, lparchive.org. Is there anybody, by the way, who's a Red Supreme fan who doesn't know? We we do do what we did do Let's Plays back in the day. Yeah, I think we did a couple that predated Red Supreme and then a couple that postdated Red Supreme. We've done it all throughout. We're big Let's mm -hmm, Play all fans. All throughout. I haven't done one recently, but you know, we want to. I would say of my straight Let's Plays, I think Dead to Rights came out probably the best. Yeah, yeah, I think that one was yeah. came out pretty, pretty I was solid. Really it was, I was um, really happy with that. But as to where it came from, if I'm remembering correctly, in the original Dead to Rights read in one of the videos where I think Jack was in prison mm -hmm. and you were doing all this mundane shit where you were just doing favors for people and collecting cigarette uh, packs yep. or maybe it was mm -hmm. single cigarettes or cigarette yep. packs, one of the two. Packs. And it was just so boring and I think at one point where you were just running and there was no music, nothing was happening, I just went like, the dead, dead to rights! No, that's, that's exactly it. We were collecting cigarette packs for Wire Boy. And I was doing this speed bag rhythm game, and I'm like, there's no music, and you're like, dead to rights. <laughs> like, as if to say, like, look upon it. Yeah. This and is it. The titular game here. <laughs> and I, I burst out laughing. You're like, game of the year. And then later, in the same level, we're in the sewer, and you're slowly edging along a cliff, and then I just stole, I'm like, dead to rights. Yeah. And just became like a sort of, and here it is, kind of thing. So it's just kind of turned into a punctuation mark that we occasionally employ. Yeah, more or less. At the uh, when things are finished, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's that. And there's that. Yeah. And every now and then, when I'm watching, I, I do like to watch NFL football, and the commentators really like to say "dead to rights" every now and then. And every time they do, I I giggle like an idiot. <laughs> like, well, he had him dead to rights. And I'm like <laughs> LPR I'm <laughs> You know, I'm like because I'm a child. Um. And I'm like, dang it, Ron Puck, because I'm an anime <laughs> child. Absolutely. Also Phoenix, right? Um, what's your le wait? Oh, ever received some funny slash creepy fan mail? Fan mail. I don't think anything's going to match the thing Chip talked about where he got some naked titties. Um Somebody sent me that, but I think it was a prank. Did I oh, I think you showed already? me that, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, wasn't our theory that was someone was probably watching some 
nudie stream of somebody sure. where they kind of like like you'll type things in the stream and they'll do what you say. Yeah, they'll like write so it. Like, out hey, it. type slow beef on a piece yeah. of paper and hold it in front of your nude boobies. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. So apparently, someone did that and then sent that picture screen capture to you. I was I would have to admit to being kind of stunned when I first got it before I figured out like yeah you know what no <laughs> and of course it's now framed above my fireplace oh I mean I jerk off to it constantly <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> what I do is I like kind of photoshopped it so it's squared off I call it my female companion and it occasionally heals me and fights yeah. battles for me and such I think the the fan fiction thing was kind of creepy yeah yeah. yeah. I mean, I was raped in it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I. It's about as fucked as you can get. That's that's about all you can say about that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm happy I'm able to laugh about that sort of thing. <laughs> yes. Um. No, I. I. Like, why? I think that's that's all you can really say about it. Yeah, pretty much. Let's just move on. Mm -hmm. uh, um. Let's see, a couple more questions. Yeah. Let's. Uh, oh, what is your favorite anime? Says at eight front flips. I'm gonna go. I'll tell you, Cowboy Bebop. That was a good one. I know it's lame, but actually, I like Trigun a lot. If you've ever watched that, I've not seen Trigun. I have seen Cowboy Bebop. Like Here's a lot. I think we've talked about this already. Yeah. Um. I saw I saw this movie recently, but I can't for the life of me remember what the name of it was. It was an anime from the late eighties. Oh, Akira. Oh yeah, Akira. I've seen. Yeah, that. I saw that recently, and I, I was very impressed with it. That was very good. That was my first. Uh, I've heard like you can't really understand the story until you read like the month and month long manga. <gasps> Berserk. Berserk. Okay. Um. Here's what sucks. I saw the anime of Berserk, and it's absolutely amazing. Except um, they don't introduce a character, right? There's one character from the manga that they just leave out, and he's needed to advance the story. Mm -hmm. So episode 24 ends on a cliffhanger that never gets resolved. Mm -hmm. It's like, I remember watching the last episode with like five minutes to go, and I'm like, how is how are they going to get out of this? And like the one minute to go, and I'm like, wait, they can't get out of this. And then it just ends. It really does. It's like kind of terrible that way. Oh. That's it's that said. It is a sick good um, manga technically. Hmm. Um, it's like it, it's all about like it's basically like free will versus determinism is the whole point of it. It's fucked. Oh. Um, <laughs> Death Note. Um, actually, the only manga I've ever actually read front to back is Death Note. I thought that was. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Death Note, but I've never seen it. It's good and it's bad. It's it's mostly good. Um, I think it has a little too much of, well, if he thinks that, then I think that, then he'll think that, then, but I think he knows I'm thinking that. You know what I mean? That, like, double bluff kind of thing? Like, yeah, the okay, thing they yeah. make fun of in The Princess Bride. They do that, <laughs> they do that a lot in Death Note, but seriously. Mm. So, um, but it is very good. I Slight would tangent, Princess Bride is a fantastic movie. It really is. Mm -hmm. Watch Excellent. it if you haven't seen it. It's great. Absolutely. Princess Bride is one of those few movies that I think appeals to every, almost every demographic. Because <laughs> there's really, there's, seriously, there's something in that movie for everybody, I think. I feel that way about Skyrim mods. <laughs> well, mm. there, there, there's that. There's that. All right, you want to do one more and then uh, close out? All right, you got one? No. Shit. <laughs> I probably should have, though. Oh. You bait and switch, slow beef. Oh, no. Um. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> Just end it here. Okay. Um. Are you actually no? Let's do this one. This is the last one. Okay. Are you gonna? Are you? Uh, this is from at. Um. Redracat. Redracate. C a t t e. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Red raw cat. Are you guys going to tackle more long plays of bad adventure games or even good ones? Really. Yes. Why would we do good ones? I don't know. I wouldn't want to do good ones. Yeah. I mean, the idea is, like, find things to make fun of in the game. Right. I've always wanted to... I don't know if I should get into this. Um, well, we would definitely have to do King's Quest Seven. Yeah, yeah, that's that's in the pipeline. It's just, it's kind of an intimidating one, because all the videos are so long compared to 5 and 6. What the hell? I always, um, I always wanted to do a Let's Play of the Elvira video games. 
Um, I don't know if you've ever played or heard about them. I have not. Uh, I'm guessing there's boobs in them, though? <laughs> yes. No, not really. I Sold. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, no, I... I um... They're obnoxiously hard. They're they're adventure games I've actually never finished. Basically, oh. they're they're that hard. Wow. Um, and yeah, and then yeah, there's boobs in them, which is great. It's like horror, like this goth horror boob kind of combination that I I just have to admit I totally like I'm, Princess Bride. It's something that appeals to everybody. I um, yeah exactly yes yeah. basically yeah absolutely. But yeah no I'm um and this one let's player um. He actually did do the Elvira 2 game back in the day. For some reason, he skipped the first one. Elvira 2? There was two games, yes. Okay. It was Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and Elvira, the Jaws of Cerberus. And I have, I had both, and I could never finish either. And it, like, it killed me. No, <laughs> you know how, like, um, I, I can get kind of obsessive about things? I, I, I had to beat these games, and I just couldn't. It was just that hard. Oh, wow. I mean, for for God's sakes, I played Sprung multiple times <laughs> for the internet, and I couldn't I couldn't beat these games. Hmm. And I, w- I was hoping for boobs at the end because I was like you know twelve, but still whatever. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, right. This was two years ago, basically. A couple of years back. But I think I think King's Quest Seven is the only thing that's really on our pipeline right now. Is there something else? Am I missing something? Um. Sorry, I got distracted. I got an IM from the Dark Kid who's asking me if the rest of Danganronpa is worth it. Uh oh. I'll answer him in a five. Get him on the podcast. Maybe I will. Hmm. Next time. Next time. Well, I think we're going to close up the Twitter line now. Thanks, everybody, for your questions. Um. Uh, anything to plug? Anything to promote? Did we really just end on revealing my Elvira video game fetish? I guess we need something better than that. Um... Oh, plug. Yeah. Plug. Um... Plugs. Uh, plugs. Um... I got nothing. Yeah. I keep okay. saying I want to LP Mario Galaxy, but I'm too lazy to get to GameBridge. So... It's a really depressing note to end on. I gotta get. I gotta start nine nine nine. I'm getting married kind of soon, so you know, probably after that. Yeah, you, time's probably. running out. I know that shit gets shut down after that. If there's any, you know, and you got it. You're, you're going on your honeymoon too, so that'll be two or three weeks that I'm. I just have to run Retsu Prey on my own. If there's any groupies out there, now's the time. I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah, slow beef can have an internet bachelor party. Please. Wink, wink. Hello. Yeah. No, please no. Okay. All right. That's good. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Thanks for listening. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye.